Time now for the Sunday Talk. Tonight, the politics of senators off the hook. Pamela Wallen and Mac Harb have now been cleared. Last month, Mike Duffy was acquitted of all 31 charges of fraud and bribery. So one of the biggest political scandals in recent history is ending with a whimper. We ask our panelists, was it all a dream? We are going to voluntarily pay back my living expenses related to the house we have in Ottawa to put all of this behind us. Harper appointed Senator Mike Duffy tried to move on, but the expense claim scandal kept exploding. The stunning development. The Prime Minister's Chief of Staff paid them. $90,000 to shut up a sitting senator. A backroom deal orchestrated with the Prime Minister's Chief of Staff, Nigel Wright, revealed just how politically dangerous the Duffy file was viewed. From Mike Duffy, who is no longer a member of our caucus and certainly never conveyed that information to me. And there was more. It's just really the tip of the iceberg. Senators Pamela Wallen, Patrick Brazo, and Mac Harb were under investigation too. This situation is so sort of unbelievable that I, I think they're in a real corner here. Harb resigned, the others were suspended without pay. When Harper turned against Nigel Wright, he resigned too, but Duffy fought back. This fraud was the PMO's creation from start to finish. For months, the headlines raged as Duffy's case played out in court and turned into the first big issue of the election campaign. <laughs> months later, after the Harper government was defeated, the verdict. The total vindication of Mike Duffy, an extraordinary judicial indictment of Stephen Harper's PMO. Covert, mind-boggling, and shocking. That's how the judge described the PMO's handling of the Duffy case. Duffy was acquitted. And now the charges against Mac Harb have been dropped and Pam Wallen has been cleared. I'm joined now by our panelists. Tasha Carradine is a columnist with the National Post and iPolitics. Supriya Devetti is a government affairs consultant and commentator. And Martin Patrickan is a reporter with Maclean's magazine. He joins us from Montreal. Hi, Martin. Hey there. So, Tasha, I'm going to start with you. What's, what happened there? Was that all a dream? <laughs> More like a nightmare, I would say, Wendy, um, especially not only for the people involved, obviously Duffy, uh, Wallen, um, and Matt Carb, but really for the taxpayer who paid for an investigation, paid for audits, paid for this trial, and nothing's come of it. So I think a lot of people are sitting around saying, what was this all for? What do you think, Supriya? Well, I, I agree with Tasha, like the longest three-year-old, I guess, nightmare that ever was, right? Um, politically speaking, anyway. I, I, I don't think, though, that we should be conflating the issue of not being able to bring forth criminal charges and to be vindicated on the criminal side to say that nothing did happen. Because, I mean, we are still talking about it. I think more and more people are aware now of just of the Senate's inner, inner workings and, and how politically fraught that is as an institution. So, Martin, I'm going to bring you in. First of all, I mean, yeah. was it all a dream? And, and, and what, what was the biggest thing for you? Like, what do you remember from all of this? Um, sort of two things. I mean, uh, you touched on a little bit on the, on the intro there. Uh, the, the PMO, to the extent to which the PMO went to, to cover this all up, and there's just a, there's a huge contradiction in there for me. You know, this is a, this is a government, the Stephen Harper's government, that came in in 2006 saying that they're going to get rid of the whole thing. Five years later, all of a sudden, the Senate is part and parcel of their re-election campaign. Uh, that was surprising, and also the, I mean, this is surprising, but also not surprising, was the sort of pan-partisanship of the whole thing. Um, you know, this wasn't just a conservative thing. It wasn't just a liberal thing. It was everybody was at the trough. So you're all people who have been watching politics for a long time. So, Prairie, when you were watching this, like, was there a particular moment where you were like, wow, I've actually, I'm shocked by that, surprised yeah, by that? There was, actually. And it was, you know, when all of the emails, uh, they all were data dumped, essentially, and we're all reading them all at once. One email that stood out to me was to Nigel, from Nigel Wright to PMO senior staff, in which he referred to, he was really worried that Mike Duffy was going to go squirrely, <laughs> and that's the exact word that he used on the weekend political shows. And I just thought, if they knew so early on that there was going to be this split, like, no wonder Nigel Wright and the rest of the PMO staff kind of circled around Harper and tried to protect him with such fervor because they realized that, you know, there was going to be this, this shift that they were going to have to deal with later on. Natasha? With me, it was the $90,000 check. When I heard that in the news, I thought, 
there's how do you explain that away? No matter what the real explanation is, a lot of people will look on that and use language to describe it that um, could lead to the sort of situation that Mike Duffy found himself in. People would just be shocked by it. I, I can't think of another moment that we have seen this in Canadian history um, where you've had this kind of exchange of money between a political staffer and a senator. And no matter how you try and explain it, like I said, some people in their minds will always look at this with shock and basically say the government did something wrong. But now there's no charges. There's uh, no charge. I know. Duffy was acquitted on 31. So, I mean, there, there's been a lot of reaction to the acquittal, the dropping of the charges, and so on. Yeah. Um, we'll get all of your views on how this got so big in just a moment. But, but here's the view of two senators. Actually, one of them is now a former senator. Leo Housakis, who was Harper's uh, speaker, the leader, the conservative uh, leader in the, in the Senate. And then from Hugh Siegel, who is now a former uh, senator, on what they thought led to all of this getting so huge. The pressure that they put on this institution at the time uh, on allegations and insinuations and accusations that hadn't been vetted by the RCMP and hadn't been vetted with various organizations uh, in large part took place because of media requests and media pressure. The politics of the day can determine who is subject to a criminal investigation because it might be politically convenient for the government of the day has to be set aside as completely unacceptable. Two very different views there. And what do you think? Is it media's fault or uh, was uh, were senators thrown under the bus for political reasons? Tasha, what, uh, who do you blame? <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't blame the media. I think the reason this trial got so much attention from the press and from was interested in the public and the whole situation, not just the trial, was because of the people involved. Mike Duffy, Pamela Wallen were household names. They were people that the average Canadian would know. And so when their names came up in this, I think there was an accelerated interest in the entire issue of the Senate. We've had Senate scandals all for many, many years. I mean, Raymond Laving, I, I challenge most, re, most viewers to say, who is the, Raymond Laving? He was a senator who was convicted of fraud, $32,000. <laughs> there we go, from he Montreal. He actually went to jail. He went to jail yeah, just to a jail. few years ago. Or, but, you know, he's not a household name, so I think that didn't make the news as much. Yeah, but no one went to jail here. Well, no one did go to jail here. No one was here. convicted. But they, no... they were not. Yeah, oh, Martin. I, I don't. My, my my thing is, is I don't necessarily think that's a bad. Uh, you know, I I don't think the admit. First of all, the the money involved. Justice isn't supposed to be a money making proposition. Second of all, there's 150 years of of precedent of the Senate that would not have been broken. There would have been status quo had this not happened. So I think the fact that we went through this whole exercise is actually quite uh, quite important. Why? What happened? What's improved? Uh, the rules have been have been tightened. Fourteen of fourteen senators uh, paid back money, Mr. Husakos included, to the tune of five hundred and thirty thousand uh, dollars. And I can bet you that this that senators will be keeping a closer eye on on what they expense and what they don't expense from here on in. What do you think? I mean, does anyone deserve the blame, or did it follow the the course that it uh, that it should have? Sorry. I think chutzpah and hubris are really to be blamed here. <laughs> at the end of the day, I, I don't blame the media. I, I actually commend the media for for bringing this the story to the fore and getting people to talk about it and getting people to care about it in a way that I don't think the Canadian public has in a very long time. Um, but I think ultimately, it's just you know senators behaving badly and and, and people that were felt entitled to their entitlements mm -hmm. on the taxpayers' dime, <laughs> um, and, and that's what this came down to ultimately. And I, and I agree with Marty here that I. Think I think now senators are going to take a second look at what they're expensing and maybe they won't complain about cold camembert and that was such fervor <laughs> as they once did. Well, we can only hope. I mean, that is, you know, if anything comes out of this, that there will be some kind of uh, more oversight, more self-restraint perhaps. Um, but at the end of the day, because Duffy was exonerated, when you look at this, you wonder if the $500,000 those senators paid back had the, the verdict been delivered before the audit, if they would have done so. Yeah. Because they were following or not following the same rules Duffy was. Yeah, because Marty, I don't know really whether the rules will change that much. Yes, more scrutiny, but it's still not clear exactly what is parliamentary business and what you can write off. Uh, absolutely. And that, therein, again, therein lies, lies an issue with the Senate. But my, my thing is I still believe that, that senators from now on, it would be political suicide for any of them to, to pull the stuff that, it was, that was pulled recently. Uh, it is a bit of a cautionary tale, though. You're right. I mean, r these rules have to be set in stone because as big as this whole scandal has been, uh, people have short memories, as we know with Mr. Levine. And, you know, five years down the road, maybe they'll start up again. So this was a huge issue for years. Then it was one of the, the, the major moments where Stephen Harper was given a hard time during the election campaign. Um, it was kind of a, a turning point. We haven't heard, Supriya, a word from Stephen Harper 
now that all of these senators have basically been cleared. Yeah, and I don't think we're going to. Uh, <laughs> no. And I mean, I, I don't know, but if I was advising him, which I'm not, but if I was going to, I would also advise him to keep his mouth shut right now. There's nothing that he can really be gained Probably from the situation, um, whether he's, he speaks he, or, or not. He's going to be vilified either way. Um, and I think, you know, we have to also recognize he does have that certain parliamentary privilege um, that hangs over this, in which he doesn't need to speak, absolutely. To well, he didn't, he didn't testify at the trial either. Yeah. He, does, he was not a party to anything like this. There's no charges, that, even, you know, remotely that were contemplated contemplated against him. So no, I mean, it's absolutely not in his interest to say anything. People will think what they think. Polls show that most Canadians thought he was not telling the truth when he said he didn't know about the check, for example. But, you know, there's, like I said, no charges. There's nothing attached to this that you could call fraud or anything else. I don't even know, Martin, whether anybody has actually asked him for comment. There hasn't even been a no comment on the, <laughs> on the verdicts or lack of any uh, court action. Uh, I don't know why he would say anything if he, if he was asked. Look, everybody knows, and, and the, the reasoning behind why people didn't necessarily believe Stephen Harper is because, as I said before, uh, he doesn't like the Senate. That was something that he based a lot of his academic career on, wrote a lot about Senate reform, promising to bring it in, and that exactly did exactly the opposite once he was in office. Well, he tried, uh, though. He, he, went, he sent a reference to the Supreme Court, that, that's which true. got no effort. effort. Yeah, effort. yeah, and, that, he, he and that's tried, the problem. He, he, tried, he tried. He also appointed 59 senators. Like, that's... You know, that's those are yeah, getting Justin close Trudeau's to Trudeau numbers. Are, well, <laughs> Justin Trudeau is appointing them too, and this shows the independent fundamental problem. Senators. In, Trudeau, in theory, there yes, independent senators but, appointed on reference by committee, and we won't get into the debate on Senate reform. But it just goes to show, I think, that when you've got a body that is unaccountable, people will behave in unaccountable ways and spend taxpayers' money. Well, last, last one hundred percent. But I, I, and, and I, I agree with that. The difference between Trudeau and, and Harper is that Harper came in with, with saying how much he disliked the Senate and used it as part and parcel of his of his re-election campaign. Well, there are, uh, is still an investigation into uh, Patrick Brazo, the one uh, yeah. senator still. We don't know what his fate will be in the end. But thank you so much. Thanks for joining us from Montreal there tonight. Martin, Thanks thank a lot. you. Thanks, guys.